What's up everybody? Today we're going to take a little break from smart collars and such and talk about what it's like to own a Doberman. I have two Dobermans and um, I know what the uh, prevailing uh, gut instinct is uh, in society. You know, uh, Dobermans have been deemed as aggressive or aggressively natured dogs. Um, you'll usually find them on attack lists such as certain amount of attacks per year or a certain amount of deaths per, uh, you know, decade. They're usually very low on the list. But one thing that you should consider is those attacks are never defined. Uh, you may find something out there where they actually define the individual attacks, they put, uh, put some context around it, but they're rarely, if ever, defined. Dobermans were originally bred in the late 19th century by Carl Doberman, and he was a tax collector, and he wanted to develop a dog that would guard his tax collection caravan and, and uh, guard him as he traveled. So the Doberman instinct today is still very much the same. They are sentinels, they are guardian dogs. And uh, they're a working breed, or they're considered a working breed, and there's a lo also a lot of other attributes that uh, can easily be applied to and to define a Doberman Pinscher. And we're going to break all those down for you today. I have two Doberman Pinschers, Aries and Athena, and uh, we're just going to kind of walk you through the ins and outs of owning a Doberman, and it is pretty exciting. They're very high energy high intelligence dogs. In fact, the AKC often lists them in the top five smartest dogs in the world. So uh, they definitely make for an interesting breed. And uh, some of the things that you think you know about them, you may not realize are completely the opposite. So let's break it down and get into it. Now, training a Doberman is typically not very hard. These are very, very intelligent animals. And if uh, you do run into a training issue with a Doberman, it's usually because he's got you figured out and he's thinking in his head, nah, I'm not doing this today. I'm not feeling it. You get a little bit of stubbornness from them, in other words. So if you do run into problems, it's generally caused by that. But the importance of training a Doberman cannot be overstated. Um, as very intelligent, as very high energy dogs, they need that kind of work. They need their brain worked on a daily basis. They need to get outside. They need to run. They need to exercise. You need to put them through activities, whether that's with you or with, you know, another dog. Um, we're lucky to have two Dobermans, so they get to go outside and play a lot together. You know, the behavior management really starts there. If you want a Doberman that's well socialized and well behaved, it starts with training, and that's the key to really opening them up. Um, whether you train or not, they are exceptional family dogs, but honestly, a Doberman will get way too caught up in his sentinel guardian role if he's not properly socialized. And that definitely begins with a training regimen and a routine one at that that goes on for the life of the Doberman. As you can see, Aries is getting ready for the camera, but both dogs enjoy a treat. Give me five. Give me five. Good boy. Sit. Give me five. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. He's on camera and he knows it. Lay down. Lay down. Good boy. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Good girl. Good. Five to ten minutes a day of that is good, but if you could do more, even better. Now for their health and nutrition needs, Dobermans are not high maintenance dogs, but you do have to follow a formula, follow a plan. Their diet does need to be high in protein, especially if they get outside a lot and they uh, do a lot of work for you, whatever that work entails. Um, Dobermans love to go on hikes. Um, they love to carry things for you. They love to train. So obviously you increase protein with that. We do a kind of half raw, half dry dog food diet. Um, which includes raw eggs, we include omega-3s, we include beef broth, bone broth. Uh, those things help with their joints, and those are the primary focuses with Dobermans is joint health and um, protein. The joint health is because they are susceptible to a wobbler's disease, I think it's called, um, which is an issue in the spinal cord, similar to something that German shepherds get. And it's an older age issue, but it is genetic, so it's something you have to worry about. Free bleeding is another issue of Dobermans. Shallow cuts and stuff, stuff like that are no big deal, but like if they were step on glass or a nail or something, that could be problematic. So we keep styptic powder in the house just for an event like that till we can get them to the vet. 
Other than that, their dietary needs are very similar to most dogs. They are not a huge breed. They're often listed as large dogs. They are not large dogs. They are medium-sized dogs. They do need a little room to breathe inside the house. You probably shouldn't own a Doberman if you live in an apartment building. Um, you know, they do need a little space to move around. They've got plenty of that here. We live in a pretty sizable home. So if you're thinking about owning a Doberman, exercise and playtime is an absolute necessity you can't you should not ever own a doberman if you plan on just having a couch dog and chilling in your house all day you shouldn't own a doberman if you live in a small apartment these dogs have got to get outside and exercise they've got to play they've got to spend some time getting that energy out of them um, the less time they get doing uh, to do that the more anxious they will be the more their mental health will decline they are not meant to lay around the house all day they're not lazy dogs now they will you know lay around for much of the day if they get in, if they're getting plenty of exercise but um luckily we have two dobermans they're able to get outside and they play a lot together and that gets a lot of their energy out especially in these hot florida summer months i mean it's right now it's it is absolutely uh it will bake you if you walk outside right now. So yeah, they'll go out there and play a little bit in the shade and then they'll come on back in. And I let them out and let them do that multiple times per day. Um, we also play fetch a lot. Fetch is a great game for a Doberman because it involves getting them into an explosive and sprinting movement. Dobermans can run up to 35 miles per hour. So uh, the more they do that back and forth with you and they love to do it, they'll do it all day long until they drop from dehydration if you let them but um go outside play fetch with them it's an easy game they love it and it gets them plenty of exercise and of course you can incorporate other things they can go on jogs with you they can go on hikes with you or other little games that you develop as long as they're moving and active it's a good game for a doberman pincher living with a doberman <sighs> We live with two. Dobermans, as I said earlier, are very intelligent creatures. I mean, it's to the point where they really, you. I mean, each Doberman has a well-defined personality and you know that they know what you're talking about. When you tell them to do something, they know it. Whether they'll do it or not is, you know, almost entirely up to them unless they're very well-trained, but they know what's going on and you can see it in their eyes half the time. It's, uh, it's a little wild and it's a little spooky sometimes. But um, Athena is a shady Doberman. Um, if she can sneak behind my back and do something that she's not supposed to do, then she will absolutely do that. She's, uh, we've dealt with some of her anxiety over the years, but um, she's gotten a lot better, especially with some training and uh, plenty of exercise, love and attention. That's what Dobermans need the most. They need interaction, love, attention, training, exercise. Uh, work that brain, work those muscles. Um, they're lap dogs. They will lay on your lap and they will love on you and just lay there and do nothing all day if you want them to, but they, they definitely need to get outside, get that exercise. It makes a world of a difference for them. And, um, they're very, very playful. They're very good with family. Um, they're very good with your kids. If you have kids, they will be staunch defenders of them kids. In fact, you have to be careful who you allow into your house suddenly and when, because the Dobermans automatic attitude is to defend they are not aggressive dogs but they are instinctively defensive posturing dogs they will go into defense mode if they are unaware of the scenario or if they're not properly trained so that's something you do have to be concerned about but as far as your family is concerned you're in probably the best hands you can be as far as a good guardian family oriented dog Um, their grooming needs, I'd say if they're very active, you need to uh, wash them at least, or give them a bath once every two weeks or so. Um, once they reach senior age, that kind of fades into three or four weeks. But um, you definitely use, uh, use a pH balanced soap if you're dealing with fleas or something like that. Dawn dish soap is perfectly fine, uh, but it's not something you should use over and over again. Um, they need a good pH balance soap. They need to be brushed regularly. They are short haired dogs, but they have, uh, you know, dogs have oils on their back and brushing them regularly helps disperse those oils. We also add coconut oil after a bath. That's kind of our conditioner. We use a little coconut oil on our dogs. We give them some as a little treat. They love it. And uh, then, of course, we spread it out on them and dry them off really, really well. 
and uh, then they're done. And of course, they hate bath time, especially Athena, which you'll see here in a minute. In the winter, it's sufficient to go over them with a good brush, but during the summer months, I like to meticulously go through their coat with a flea comb. And of course, it will get pretty tedious over time, but it's well worth the effort, especially this time of the year. And it's always fun to see his reaction whenever I hit his good spots. Now, I know I talked about this earlier, but it's important to keep in mind that Do Dobermans can be aggressive, and this is usually keyed off of defensive posturing. These dogs, after all, were developed to guard caravans, and that often meant being aggressive and defending the caravan. Um, in fact, that's where the clipping of the ears came from. It's uh, traditional to clip their ears. I don't do, I have not done that with my Dobermans, but it's traditional to do that. And it was originally so thieves, you know, uh, couldn't grab a hold of their ears and pull their heads off, you know, their throat so they can lock their jaws on their necks. That's originally what that was for. And then, of course, now it's a cosmetic, you know, aesthetic thing that uh, I'm not too concerned about. My Dobermans have floppy ears. They look ridiculous sometimes, whatever. Um, but they are guard dogs. So that is something that has to be properly managed. Um, you need to teach them, train them early on that they're not to uh, go on the defensive, you know, if the mailman knocks on the door or a, a friend comes over to the house whom they've never met. Um, you need to socialize them early, get them outside, get them around other people, get them around other animals. They will be defensive against other animals too. It doesn't matter if it's a little bitty kitten or if it's a Great Dane, they will go into defensive posturing often when, um, when they are forced into confronting something like that without any kind of training. Um, there are legal repercussions to owning a Doberman, not because it's illegal, but because of where you may live. Some landlords, Dobermans have a reputation. It's undeserved in my opinion, but it is what it is. If uh, you're moving somewhere, especially if you're renting uh, from a landlord, you need to check the local laws in the area before you do that. And you need to talk to that landlord because you may not be allowed to own a Doberman pincher there. Um, you also may have to deal with much higher insurance rates for owning a Doberman Pinscher simply because, again, they are wrongly, in my opinion, um, smeared as aggressive dogs. And like I said earlier, the uh, attacks that um, have been perpetuated by Dobermans are almost never placed within c proper context. Um, so, and they are also on the lower end of that spectrum whenever you uh, look at those statistics, but uh, it is what it is. It's the world we live in. It's what we have to do. Um, so you do have to worry about those legal considerations and uh, insurance ramifications for owning a Doberman Pinscher. And in fact, it's probably best if you live in your own home, you know, or they have to worry about it so much. Uh, but definitely check ahead of time before you move camp or do anything in a new area where you're unfamiliar with the local laws and um, the local code, the statutory codes. There you have it, the uh, Doberman Pinscher. I am over 40 years old and I have owned Dobermans since I was a little kid. Well, my parents owned Dobermans back then, but um, I've had Dobermans all my life. It's the only dog that I know and understand intrinsically. Um, they are my favorite dogs, and I believe that they're as close to perfection as you can get for a family dog. I'm not talking about other un unrelated factors and the things that you have to do to uh, socialize them of that nature. Just for the family, they are almost per the perfect family dog because of their loyalty, um, their fierce defensiveness of their family, their lovability. They're, uh, they are couch dogs. When, when you're just chilling in there, they will lay on your lap, lap dogs. Um, they love to exercise and play with their family. They love to partake in all of the activities that you do as a family, and that's why I love them. They have um, certain health issues. Most pure breeds do. Um, those things will be things you need to look into before purchasing a Doberman or a um, you know, as far as the free bleeding thing and the um, wobbler syndrome, and there's definitely a few others that you need to check into as well. Um, but other than that, um, they generally will live to between eight and 10 years, give or take. And uh, it's not the longest in the world, but again, purebred dogs, you're rarely going to get a huge lifespan out of that. So uh, still, 
Absolutely great, fantastic uh, family dogs. I love my Dobermans, and I hope that you will too. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. That's going to help us keep some of these uh, videos rolling, um, especially since I've got some stuff up here I keep pointing at. You know, at the end of every video, I'm going to review this stuff eventually, and I will. And uh, but those likes and those subscriptions go a long way. Also, comment, you know, concerns, questions you have for Doberman uh, about Dobermans. If you're looking into get one, getting one, um, I always try to jump on there and answer your questions, comments, and concerns, especially about this. I'm not a veterinarian, but like I said, I've I've got decades now of experience with Dobermans, so I can probably answer most of your questions if you have any. Other than that, I appreciate you watching, and uh, everybody have a fantastic day.